Good day everyone! Season's greetings! Welcome to our session, The Research Designs. Our session focused on the definition of research designs, also the qualitative research designs and quantitative research designs. To begin with, let us define research design as the techniques and strategies that the researchers utilize in the various aspects of research study in a precise, coherent, parallel, and logical way constitutes the methods for data collection, measurement, and the way of analysis. Let us remember that the focus of our research is focused on the consumers and the businesses, as the consumers on their behavior, preference, and the way they decide. Into business, the way they formulate strategies in order to establish a sustainable interaction among customers and themselves. Qualitative research designs basically has six designs. Phenomenology, case study, ethnography, grounded theory, historical analysis, and content and discourse. Phenomenology focuses on the lived experiences of the respondents. Case study, on the other hand, focuses on a specific case, a specific problem at a specified time. Ethnography, on the other hand, is used to understand race, ethnicity, and culture-based identities. Grounded theory focuses on explaining various theories. Historical analysis is a design that used to understand the history or past events that could be utilized for future perspectives. And content and discourse. This design is used for empirical, text analysis, and status quo analysis. Let us have some examples on the various qualitative research designs. Let us have an experiences in online entrepreneurship. It focuses on the lived experiences of the participants, let's say, entrepreneurs, when they engage in online entrepreneurship. For a case study, let us have an inventory management of a specific diner. Doing a case study as a research design, you focus on a specific problem, a definite place, and a specific time period. Usually, case study goes to understand different perspectives, activities, which leads to the improvement of certain processes as far business and market research is concerned. Ethnography is utilized when we want to understand the beliefs or practices of a certain group of people. This research design is best in understanding this. Grounded theory, on the other hand, let's say for example, social theories. There are many theories in social sciences, just for example here. So we, if we want to prove or disprove certain theories, then this research design is best for this one. We have historical analysis. If we want to understand what happened in the past, let's say for example, a history of the lost village, then historical analysis is the best research design you can utilize. Considerably, for content and discourse, let's say, what are the different activities and how does modern family lives today, then content and discourse is best design. Utilizing various resources such as textual, systematic review are one of the strategies under content and discourse designs. Moving forward, I have here some qualitative research designs on my researches. I have heard the modern gist of an essay, Economic Development Issues. Here, I have used content and discourse. The other one is an analysis of microfinance and its impact to borrowers and microfinance institutions. I have utilized phenomenology. Now, let us deal with quantitative research designs. We have six actually, for quantitative research designs. We have survey, correlational, causal, experimental, semi-experimental, or quasi-experimental, and the last is regressional. I haven't included regressional because sometimes regressional is combination of correlational and causal with additional statistical tools that is used for interpretation, analysis, and modeling of specific data. Let us remember, that quantitative research designs utilizes numbers unlike qualitative which uses narratives, documents, and field notes. For surveyed research designs, it uses questionnaires. Usually, these are descriptive in nature. 
correlational research designs seeks to understand the relationship among variables, usually to reflect whether there is a positive or um, indirect relationship that exists among the variables you want to take onto. For causal research designs, it understands effects and causation, whether a certain phenomena happened because of the movement of the other variable. For experimental and semi-experimental, both of them deals with the variable treatments and intervention. Usually, from the natural sciences, life sciences, they use experimental designs. They conduct it on a certain place, such as laboratory or experimental place, wherein they use different set of variables, such as controlled variables, experimental variables. These types of research designs are rigid and usually needs experts to monitor the experimental process that undertakes. On the other hand, semi-experimental or quasi-experimental, though both of this experimental and semi-experimental uses intervention and uh, controlled groups, semi-experimental is more lenient and there are some rules that can be adjusted into, in order for the method is not too stiff and can be accommodated with, with an analysis that could be derived into. Usually, social sciences use semi-experimental or quasi-experimental rather than experimental because of ethical reasons. More so, there are some groups that are treated and not, and comparative analysis is applied to them. Based on my experience, I refrain myself in using experimental or semi-experimental because first, they require really a very rigid methodology and planning or scaffolding. Second is that um, there are many things that you need to consider such as the behavior, um, of, course, of course, the ethical purposes, and um, as well as implementation. So in order for us to further understand um, quantitative research design, let us have this example. For survey research designs, maybe we could look on why some various customers have their expressions. Maybe surveying among potential customers, why are they happy, why are they sad, why do they get angry. So in market research and business research, we do this a lot. For correlational, maybe we could somehow understand like this one, a relationship between friends and motivation. Is there a positive relationship or is there a negative relationship? among the variables that we want to consider. So if this is reflected on your research problem or statement of the problem, then correlational suits the research designs. For causal, maybe let's have this. A certain fruit causes changes in appearance or the way you do things. So, so a certain variable is responsible for a change of the other variable. So that is causality, established causation or causality um, as an interpretation or an analysis of a certain problem or paradigm. Experimental, on the other hand, like I've said before, this is more rigid and more used in life sciences and natural sciences. Uh, they are confined in laboratory experiments or experimentation rooms. On the other hand, quasi-researches are on um, intervening groups and group analysis too. Now, I have here my published research. This research is entitled, The Political Economy of Low-Income Countries. So here I have used a quantitative research design, in particular, causal, causal research design. So what I did here is to understand the political factors and the economic factors, which of them causes um, as a reflection of other variable, if it, um, if a certain variable, let's say political variables, have a certain movement, does, does it have an effect on the economic variable? So this is how the study was um, explained and was conducted. Also, I have here another study. This is published in Ascendance Asia Singapore. This is entitled Macroeconomic Policy Sensitivity of ASEAN Members. So I have used here causality and correlational designs. In particular, this is a regressional um, approach. Uh, I have used regression modeling in understanding different factors, macro policy sensitivity. I have used here the real gross domestic product as a representative of um, analysis here using uh, government variables 
and uh, monetary variables. And I have used um, lag models to understand and analyze the various effects of the problems that I want to clear out. Moving forward, mixed research designs on the other hand is uses qualitative and quantitative research designs. So it is a combination of both. Uh, both business and market research, the trend today uses this one because um, the qualitative and quantitative research design has its own advantages and disadvantages. Mas nakakatulong kasi sa paggawa ng analysis at paggawa ng mga formula strategies kapag very supplemental ang ating mga data. Kaya mas malaking tulong ang quality at quality. Now, I have here a research that was conducted, I think, 2018. This is entitled, The Savings and Investment Behavior of Selected Fisher Folks in Municipality of Rosario. I have here used triangulated research design, which is actually a mixed research design. I have used here uh, descriptive and inferential approaches. So, I have used here the um, phenomenological approach in understanding what have they experienced. And inferential design, I have used regression modeling through um, causation and correlational analysis. So that ends uh, our presentation. So I hope you have learned something today. May I humbly request you to go back to your Google Classroom for our activity. And a question can be posted or can be posted in the comment section of our Google Classroom trend. So with this, in truth, excellence, and service. This is your teacher.